Hi, this is Jared from ShoeGnome, and today I want to talk about details and sections. So uh, I was talking with a couple of users this week um, who independently asked me uh, best techniques for sections and details, and I happen to be working on both those things this week, so let's talk about them. Uh, first off, I think it's important to just get out of the way. Uh, I'm not a purist, so while you'll see my models and they are heavily 3D. Um, some might view the work I do and think it's a little extreme, but I do as much as I can in 3D. That said, when it comes to finishing out sections and doing details, I have no problems with um, the right kind of 2D work. So um, let's stop looking at this pretty image and jump to a typical section from my template and let's just start talking. So uh, here we have, this is the sample building from my template. So if you want, you can open up my template and try all this stuff out. Here's kind of default section. With very little effort, um, this is kind of the default of where my sections are before I start putting 2D. I actually will do a little more than this, but we'll, we'll get to that. But I think you can see the basics are, you know, footings are there. Um, stuff under the slab is all modeled, the um, bond break, the insulation is modeled, we've got siding, got a rim joist there, got some modeled TJIs, the flooring, cabinets, all that stuff. Now what's missing um, is kind of any detail like plates. So let's just jump over to uh, not this project, let's go back to this one. Um, so looking at, you know, kind of getting to this level where we're showing headers, we're showing plates and whatnot. So how to do that. Um, if you open up favorites in my template and you go down to documentation 2D, we get this framing lumber object. It's a 2D object, um, that in the, you know, library it's under 2D details, 21 or, you know, 22 if you're there or 20, and it's just this, Thing here where you can pick from standard sizes, uh, you can do single or doubles, you can do blocking, uh, continuous to finish, um, and you can set some settings there for color and line type. I love this object um, because it's super easy to just place that in there, um, you know, rotate this, put it in place. I'm not going to snap it, but you know, snap there. If you've got a uh, a double for the top plate, you change that to double, you hit OK, now you got your top plate. Um, so you place all these and you do one wall and then you just select them all, copy and paste, and move them over to another other wall. Um, often sections are uh, pretty repetitive, so you can put all of these, um, I'm going to just do this, you know, you can put them all in place in one section and then just start copying and pasting them from you know wall to wall section to section and it goes really quickly uh, I have um, tried projects where I model every single like all the top plates and sills and stuff and it's doable with beams um, but it's excessive and it slows down the model and I just don't think the value is there um, that said, I will model like King and Jack studs sometimes using columns. Uh, I don't know if I have a project that shows that open right now, um, but that's kind of handy because then, you know, for fun you can do that. Now headers are a different story. If we jump over to this project, um, oh no, I I did just do the same object there. Um, here we go. So this project, I've modeled the header, as you can see, as a beam. Um, and that's because I did the structural drawings for this project. So I needed to show this header in um, on the structural drawing anyways, so I modeled it. Uh, I think headers are worth modeling most of the time uh, because they have implications, um, whereas, you know, top plates and sill plates less so. So anyways, let's go back to this. So this 2D framing lumber object is wonderful, and I use it all the time. 
Another one I use less now than I used to because of the um, improvements to building materials is this 2D um, insulation object, which again uh, is in the library under 07 thermal and moisture protection. There's both a full one and a little cut one. Uh, this is great because you can um, stretch it, resize it, do whatever. So it's, it's great for filling in things. Um, and comes in handy when you're doing details, like 2D details. Um, while we have the favorites open, let's just go and take a look at some other things I have here. Uh, 2D detail line. Um, and then down here, I've got some uh, fills. So if I'm doing some rigid insulation and it's not worth modeling, I've got this. Um, favorite saved. Now it's important to note here that this is that fills have a couple of different types. We've got um, drafting fills, surface fills, cut fills, and building materials. When doing details or when adding 2D to sections, you want to use the building material uh, because building materials are linked to the building materials in the project. So this is rigid insulation. Here's a rigid insulation. If I decide uh, all the rigid insulation should actually have a different color and a different um, fill type. I've just changed those. And now this has changed, even though this is a 2D object. So that 2D rigid insulation and this 2D rigid insulation down here have both changed because they're linked to the building material. Whereas if we had treated this as a cup fill and just tried to use you know, this cut fill, it wouldn't have changed because this is a cut fill, not a building material like we want it to be. Okay, so that's the basics of fills and um, this framing lumber object. Now let's go look at a couple examples and see what else I can tell you. Um, here is a project um, with a bunch of stuff going on. And one thing I'm gonna do, let's go find and select. Um, so this command F. I'm gonna change it from element type is all types to 2D. So I'm gonna hit plus. And so what I've just done is I've selected all the 2D that shows up um, in, this, in this section. Uh, that was from some earlier work of figuring out it. But you can see there's not much, right? If we, uh, let's do this. Let me plus, let me just delete it all. So that is the raw section. So undo that. You know, there's the added information. So I've added these plates. I've added this little bit of insulation here. Um, here I've added some uh, spray foam insulation that is kind of coming down. And now uh, you'll notice here and here I've got kind of a jagged line and a straight line for rigid insulation. I think I've shown this on another video. Instead of using the solid line, I will use the sketch, um, and it gives it kind of a better look. Shouldn't have it on that side, but that's the random one I selected. Um, you'll notice I do model, again, major beams. Like here's a critical beam, um, here's another critical beam. So those are modeled. Um, I think that's all I want to show on that one. So this right here is a live detail. So I created a detail from this, and then uh, here is that detail, which I've gone in and added and stuff to it. Um, you'll see this is line work in fills because it was created from you know, these. Um, this object was converted to fills. So I placed these framing objects before creating the detail. Um, when I'm in the detail, I there's a couple things. Um, if you, you notice, I got true, lay, true line weight on. All of the line work in this detail is all the same. It's um, 100, so 0.18 or point, point 0.18 millimeters or 0.51 points. Um, basically, I do uniform line weight for details because that makes life easier, unless it's something specific that needs a heavier line. Um, and because this is fully independent from everything else, I don't worry about 
what the layers are because they don't matter because this view only has one save view. Um, so see labels, that's all straightforward. Um, you know, go in and add some lines. Uh, this is, you know, just drawn that in, kind of faked it in. There's an error there. It should be like that. Um, but again, this is, you know, just 2D and uh, created from the model. And it's just about what the, the look is. So I'm not stressing about, you know, that these uh, layers could all be cleaned up. Or if you zoom in here, that there's two lines here. Uh, this looks like it's from some mill work that was there. Doesn't matter. You just let, leave it. Um, when I created the detail, there might have been some other stuff here. If there was something in the distance, we'll just delete that. Um, yeah, so that's that detail. Let's see what else I want to show. Um, here's another section. Uh, again, let's just talk about what's 2D and what's 3D. So all types 2D. Um, again, very little. Right, we've I put in some framing members, notes, um, headers, but that's it. So so much of this is the actual model. Um, but when it's time to go in and add that little last bit of detail, um, this just can't say enough good things about this uh, detail stud uh, object. It's just wonderful for these things. Um, Okay, what else? Okay, so let's come to this detail. Again, uh, this is pulled from the model, build materials for fills. Uh, this looks like this uh, piece of framing was added after I cut the detail, so this was added in place. You know, we got some dash lines, some leaders, but then we got some splines with arrows turned on it. All straightforward if you've done detailing you know back in the days of 2d it's it's not much different except that you're starting from the model as an underlying bit and then you're not worrying about um, kind of overlaps or, or whatever might be kind of ugly behind the scenes um, here's one more example so here's a section um, this was a simple basement remodel, so I didn't stress out to make the model perfect, but here's what I got. I just copied and pasted it over here and then added my building materials. Um, this is a uh, correct building material, um, but the actual building material is weird, or it doesn't fit to the skin. So I let me just undo that. I changed the fill orientation. Um, to relative to fill origin, and then this one with distorted fill. And so I was able to um, stretch it to uh, where are the fill handles. You got the fill handle there, so you got two. You rotate it. Uh, do this. You rotate it so it's in the right way, and then you stretch it out so that it um, looks like it aligns with fill. And or you don't worry that it's not perfect because who cares? Um, yeah. So for this one, I copied and pasted the information over here, and then just started cleaning things up. You know, put a fill over there to make it pretty, and uh, you know, mask what needs to be masked. Call it a day. Um, one of the things I like to do with details too because again they're basically information over some 2d graphics is do things like use a linear gradient fill to mask out you know i want to highlight how this railing is but i don't want to deal with what's going on behind that wall so i've just kind of done a decorative fill to cover that up uh, again this is all taken from the model. I delete whatever needs to be deleted or just leave it there. So for instance, here's some fills that are automatically created when you turn a 3D part of the 3D view into detail. In the old days, I would have gone and cleaned this up and made it all perfect, but who cares? 
this this is good looking detail even though it's got some some hidden garbage in there doesn't matter to me um, because this is not getting in the way of communication I think that's all I've got I've gone on for 15 minutes which is a really long time but hopefully seeing all this information will help you feel comfortable doing details and doing sections and adding information to both those things so thank you very much and uh, you guys have a great day